Between the CBD and the newly developed Kolpiti Town Hall area lies Slave Island. An old city, old and proud of its every pop, crack and wrinkle. It doesn't hide what it's made of, sweat, muscle and blood of generations. Surrounded by the Beira Lake, which once protected the Colombo fort during the Portuguese era, the area gained its name during the Dutch period as Reblin Kafirs and slaves were brought there. With the conquest of the British, the area developed commercially and new buildings like barracks were created, complementing the activities happening in fort. With the passing years, the Muslims and Malays have become the predominant ethnic group in the area, which has a considerable variety of people of different ages, incomes and cultures. Whilst majority of the people in the area are permanent settlers, temporary settlers who find it easily accessible to their working places, as well as commuters, have also become an invincible part of the place. The main streets, as well as the by-roads, are constantly alive with the humans and vehicles that run through it from dawn to dusk. Low-income housing can be seen in the area. Whilst people live their own colourful and unique lifestyles in the street and the little alleyways, a strong sense of community is evident amongst them. The little alleyways with their own drama all converge into little back courts. Behind the houses form in a series of small private gathering pockets for the inhabitants. The built fabric is rich with a vast collection of buildings, old and new. Whilst new commercial buildings and offices like the Nawam Mawat office development, five-star hotels, financial centres like the Insurance Corporation are being added to the fabric, the historic fabric, Hotel Nippon, the old railway station, De Soisa building, castle building, tucked in between the new fabric gives a historic touch to the place. Yet, there are a number of underutilized buildings and areas like the old warehouses adjoining the railway station, the John Keels warehouse area, the Elephant House buildings and the edge of the Bere Canal. Well connected to the surrounding through different public transport systems is an important feature of the area. The railway station, built during the British era, forms an interesting dialogue with the surrounding context. The decorated iron pillars and masonry arches add character to this entity. In close proximity to the station, one can find two other buildings which are part of the historic fabric. Surrounded by the bazaar activities and the street traders in the vegetable market, these two buildings, Hotel Castle and De Soisa, are situated at the center of the area. Both buildings once belonged to a wealthy person called Soisa. Yet, at present its ownership is divided amongst a large number of different parties. Whilst the Soisa building has become a set of shop houses, the castle accommodates a bar and a hotel. Hotel Castle, built during the British era, has windows adorned with coloured glass. Whilst its heavy masonry columns give character to the bulky structure, the timber stairway becomes a central feature of the interior. However, Lack of maintenance has deteriorated the smooth interior finishes of the building as well as the structure. The De Soisa building, with its repetitive grid, decorative archers and timber-framed windows, forms a significant landmark in the area. Yet, its diverse ownership has resulted in many interior changes in different parts of the building.
while some changes have been done properly most of it is architecturally quite unacceptable and the lack of maintenance has resulted in plants growing all over the facades which are already partly covered with a large number of billboards These two buildings and the adjoining land has amazing potential to develop as a center for Slave Island. How best can these buildings be reutilized whilst maintaining their particular character? Can it be conserved in a way that would help to preserve the socio-cultural, aesthetic and functional aspects of Slave Island Old Center? Are certainly areas which are worthy of further exploration.